What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video or youth service. Um I just bear with me here. I hope my dog doesn't bark at everything, but if she does, she does. Just don't mind it. Um welcome back. It's been another two weeks since um I done the youth service and I have mentioned that I'm doing it every two weeks right now, you know, until further notice. But um I do have a word for the youth. Uh this um this uh, afternoon I'm recording this on Tuesday um, so I can uh, put the video out on Wednesday in case um, I have to work and everything and it's too tired and stuff so but um uh, just preparing right now just uh, I already got the sermon wrote and um, making the video right now but um, I do have a word for uh, the youth and anyone that you know watches it you know of course I, I do pray for these videos and um, I do pray that you know whomever watches it the Lord will speak to them. So I'm just going to pray real quick and then uh, get right into it. So just, uh, dear Heavenly Father, give you honor and glory. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for this word. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you just have your way in this uh, sermon, Lord. And I just pray that anyone who watches it, watches it the hearts will be open and to where, Lord, that you can speak to them, Lord God. Uh, just pray and just have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, give you honor and glory. Amen. So um, I do have a word that is kind of similar to uh, two other words that um, I have done already. I felt the Lord has given unto me. And I just really feel that in this word that, um, it's my talk. Uh, I do feel that in this word the Lord is trying to speak to someone uh, whom I don't know. But I do pray that your heart will be open and tender unto the Lord. Um, so the um, Lord's desire is that everyone to, to be saved and do pray that whomever the Lord is speaking to, or if it's multiple people, that you will be open to the word this afternoon. So I just I'm just going to go ahead and read and get into it. So I'm going to read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. That's in the Old Testament. It reads this. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live and so the word circumcised is, is something they used to do with their bodies um, back in the Old Testament and it was a outward appearance of showing what happened on the inside uh, of a transformation but it says the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and that's what I and what really circumcised what it means is the Lord your God will change your heart and the and will change the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul that you may live and that's what I want to talk about today and that's like what I said I've had a word um, that the Lord's given to me about it's time for a change stop it's time for a change and examine yourselves and that's why I feel like the Lord is really trying to speak to someone about changing. And how many of you want that is change? You know, a lot of people don't like change. You know, growing up, I never liked change. I always wanted things to stay the same. I, always want, I didn't want nothing to change. But the Lord wants change in our lives. He doesn't um, want things to stay the same because he wants to do new stuff in our lives and through us. And that's what I want to talk about is change. And uh, so the title it is, is, Do You Want Change? And I want you to ask yourself that today is, do you want change in your life? Do you want change in your heart? Do you want change of things that's going on around you? And of course, it just, it all starts with, you know, with Jesus. It all starts with God. But I do want to read, um, first of all, you might be asking yourself this what do I need to change from? And one of those words that I, uh, I uh, had given was to examine yourself. Now, is to examine yourself. If we really stop and we really start to examine ourselves and the things that's going on in our lives and that's going on in our hearts, is it really what God wants? You may want to examine yourself and to know, am I really in the faith? Am I really have I really accepted Jesus into my life and so um really what we really need to change from 
is anything that's contrary to God, meaning anything that's opposite of God. And so how can we tell if anything in our lives is opposite of God? Now, well, I just want to read in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, uh, verse 29. And it gets pretty into it, but I want you to listen. These are things that is contrary to God, that goes against God. Now, starting in Romans chapter 1, verse 29, it reads this. Um, Being filled with all unrighteousness. And it goes on to say sexual immorality. Um, it goes on to say wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. And this is just a few of it. There's another part in Corinthians that talks about this. But this is a, these are people... Or uh, these things right here is all contrary to God. It all goes against of what God wants for us and what He wants for our lives. These are some things right here. If you really sit and if you really examine yourself, you know, am I being disobedient to my parents? You know, am I thinking of wickedness or am I am I being wicked? Am I am I um spreading gossip? Am I being a hater of God? You know, there's so many few things you can just sit. And just really just examine yourself and really and just think, am I, do I have this in my life? Is this in my heart? You know, God wants a change in our hearts. And so, um, God don't want us to be like this at all. And uh, God doesn't want any of this in our lives. He doesn't want any, any of this. What God wants, to be honest, what God wants and truly wants for all of us is to have a relationship with Him. And that's what truly, that's what God wants. You know, it reads in Second Peter three nine. With all of these things that that I just read in Romans, of all that stuff that's opposite of God, you know. First, what I want you to know is this: it reads in Second uh, Peter three nine that the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. God is very patient with us. But his will is not willing that any should perish, but all that sh that all come to repentance. And that's truly what God wants. God wants a relationship, and God wants us all to come to repentance, meaning a change of heart. And a, a will and a purpose in our hearts to really um, serve the Lord, to really be with the Lord. It all starts with accepting Jesus into our lives and following Him. You know, but like I said, God is very patient. He is. God is very patient, very kind, very loving. I, I'm going to read, um, you know, in, in, in 1 Timothy 2 4, it talks about. That God's desire is that all men to be saved. Men and women. God's desire is all of us to be saved. But God also gives us a free choice. A free will. There is free will in lies. And we can all choose to lie. We can all choose to steal. We can all choose to, to be, so, be disobedient and to ignore. You know, when your mom or dad is telling you to do, do something, you have a choice to um, to disagree, you have a choice to ignore what they say and just do what you so please, you know. But God's will is for all of us to be saved, but He does give us a choice. But um, I'm gonna read. I want to read in, in Psalms 103. It says this, verse eight, Psalm 103, verse eight: The Lord is merciful and is gracious and is slow to anger and abounding in mercy or abounding in love and that's who God is God is a good good father he's a father full of love but God does want to have a relationship with us but it, I, it all starts to come into a place of repentance so I just want to ask you a question I know this word isn't very long but I do pray that it does speak to someone do you want that 
do you want to have a relationship with Jesus and, and to have God as your father and to have him to guide you know a lot of us we just we we, we struggle with you know God you know lead me where, where do you want me you know what decision do you want me to make you know we all struggle with this but all starts to come into a place of repentance if you don't know Jesus first and God will start to guide you he will start to lead you he will start to teach you and show you these things you know a lot of times you know the places where I get held up and you know not knowing what to do the Holy Spirit will encourage me to study this or to study that uh, you know he wants to lead us into God us and so first of all as to do you want that do you want to have a relationship with Jesus do you want all this stuff that's been going on in your life you just all want it to just wipe away you know, where God can do that. God can wipe it all away. I want to read first in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, verse 33. It reads this. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. So, folks... And back in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals and stuff like that. We're now in the New Testament, which is what we live under, the New Covenant. And this is what I just read. This is in the Old Testament, but it's talking about the New Covenant. It's talking about the times that we live under now, under the saving grace of Jesus Christ. See, they didn't have that back then. Now we can have that relationship with God without sacrificing animals because Jesus was our ultimate sacrifice, which he reconciled, he fixed up, simple terms, our fellowship that we can have with God again. And folks, we live under the age, as of, as of right now as I speak, we live under the age of grace, under the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Christ and we have this now that's what I just read is that that is available to us today and you can have that today and so but I want to go back to Deuteronomy I'm going to start in verse 7 is this is available to us today but I want to read this right here I have already read that um and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and that you may live. Also the Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and all those who hate you, who persecuted you, and you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of of your land for good for the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced in your fathers and here's what I want to speak on if you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law and then you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and folks that's what it starts with is if you obey if you obey Bay. Folks, if you don't know Jesus, youth or anyone watching, if you don't know Jesus, the first thought is obeying is to accept Christ. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Everything becomes new in our lives. And you will see it. You will feel it. After you accept Christ, it's like when you wake up the next day, it's like it's just like you just a, a different feeling all over you, a different different just perspective, a different way of looking at things. And God will be able to teach you and he'll be able to show you how to do all these things that you know you thought you could never do or didn't know. And that's why God's a teacher, he teaches us too. But like I said, it all starts first with obeying. So um and Jesus will wipe away all kinds of things. Like, um, Jesus will wipe away, if you can see that, read that, I hope the camera's right away, if, if you can, he will wipe away, if you have lying in your life, if you want to stop lying, he will wipe away lying, 
if you have um, if you have cheating going on in your life, you know, if you want to stop cheating, you know, God will help you to stop cheating as well. He will teach you. He will give you the strength and he will show you the right way to go and all these things that's wrong with lying, cheating. If you have stealing in your life, if you have a habit of stealing, God can, God's bigger than ha bad habits. He can teach you to, um, to, to stop stealing. He can discipline. He will give you strength to stop stealing, you know. If you have um, cursing going on in your life, if you just have a really bad, filthy mouth and you just like speak all kinds of stuff, God can help you with your tongue, with your mouth. You know, that's nothing impossible with God. God can help you. He can clean and wipe all these things away. Um, the last one, if you have a really bad attitude, you know, we know some people in the lives that have a really bad attitude. But if you have this, like I said, God can wipe it away. He can clean it up. He can make you, you know, white as snow and get and blot out all this stuff out of your life. He can teach you. Now, now sometimes all these things doesn't come wipe right away as soon as it comes. Sometimes it is, but sometimes God allows to, us to keep some things in our life to teach us from it and to mold us and shape us. And God can use it as a tool. But He will be with you. He will help you and never leave you nor forsake you because He loves you. Um, God can help you with that. Uh, he can also help you with some, with some other things of life is depression you know uh depression is not good you know god doesn't like depression god hates depression he doesn't want his people to be depressed and sad and stuff but if you had depression in life and you, god can just you know once you see you know jesus talks about that he said peace i leave with you he says my peace i leave with you there's all peace and joy in jesus because he is the truth you know God can help us with that um, anxiety. Anxiety can bring on depression. Anxiety can bring on that, you know, just just depression in our lives, you know. But um, there's a scripture in the Word that talks about, you know, cast all your cares upon God. It, there's other scriptures, uh, I mean, other translations that says anxiety. Cast your, all your anxiety uh, with prayers and supplication, meaning just praying to God and giving it to Him. And just leave it to him and to say it says the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But first, you know, you give it to God. And you just trust him with it, you know, and stop trying to think about it, worry about it, and figure it out. Another thing, folks, that comes along with anxiety and depression is very terrible is suicidal thoughts. You know, that's just evil. It's just from the enemy. That Satan wants us to have anxiety. He wants us to have depression. But you know what? The Lord rebukes Satan. That's what Michael said. The Lord rebukes Satan. Suicidal thoughts, you know, it's just terrible. It's just evil. But you know what? God can wipe that away too. And that's somebody that shared their testimony with me. They was about to kill themselves. And it's like they prayed. They prayed and it's just... <laughs> God just really just took it away. Took away the thought, that desire of wanting to kill themselves. You know, but God has a purpose and a plan for your life that you cannot even begin to even imagine because it's so big but it's so good and it's so amazing and God has so much purpose for each and every one of our lives and God does not want any one of us to kill ourselves because he loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us so that you may live so that you may have a life so that you may know love and the love of him whom is our father so God has a purpose for each plan of life. And the last one I just want to show is discouragement. How many of us got discouraged or have been discouraged before? You know, it happens a lot of times in our lives where we don't have the courage to do anything. We get discouraged. It's just the enemy. He just wants to get put fear in your life. But you know what? Again, the Lord rebukes the enemy. And we have authority over the enemy. You know, Jesus said, I give you authority. You know, trample over serpents and just all kinds of stuff. You know, but God can encourage us. The Holy Spirit has encouraged me um, numerous of times. Uh, just, to, you know, just starting off on my walk. You know, I never thought I could do this. Like my first video on YouTube, that time I went live, you know, stuff like that. And speaking in front of people, preaching, you know. But you know what? Just trusting in the Lord, you know. And he would give you the strength to do it. So I just wanted to share this word with y'all. Again, the last scripture is that what I already said before. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It 
You know what? If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, old things have passed away. And behold, all things become new. As a new life with Jesus. You know, it's like, that's why they say you're born again. You know, but it's a born again and you're having someone with you. You're having someone there to teach you. You're having someone there to guide you. And that's why God is a father, you know. And through his spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit would teach us and guide us. So, um, that's the word. Um, I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. And I pray that someone was encouraged by it. I pray that, uh, you know, the Lord has spoke to someone. Look, God loves you so much. Of course, we say it all the time, which is, it is true that, that he sent his son. But if you really think about that, how many of you have sons out there? And even if you don't have a son, think about it if you have a son. You really love him so much. You want them to be with you. But God said, I'm going to send my son to die for them. You know, the Bible says that, and yet... As we were sinners, as we were all this terrible, filthy, just all kinds of garbage and junk all of us. God says, I'm still going to send my son to die for them. And Jesus says, I'm still going to die for them. You know what? That's why the Bible says that, you know, of course, God's desire is for all men to be saved. But even if they reject them, there's still going to be some that's going to accept them. But course even if they do reject Jesus the first second or third time you know God's love still pursues after them but again we have a free choice and I just want to ask you what choice are you going to make if you don't know Jesus we have right here we have right now we're still living in the age of grace you know but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen the next two three hours from now so I don't know your life, but God does. So that's why you have this chance and opportunity right now to accept Christ. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then I'm going to end the video. So just dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you get all the honor and glory. I thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. I pray that it encourage someone, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord, there's anyone that's watching, that's listening to this, Lord, that they don't know you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that they will accept you, Lord, they feel your presence. And all they got to say is, so Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know that I need you. Come and make your life, come and make you in my life, in my, in my body, and make you um, the, uh, in my temple, in my home, Lord. I accept you, Lord, and teach me to follow you. I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. Come and make your home inside of me. And folks, the Bible saves is by grace through faith. And if you believe, you pray that and you believe and truly believe, you've been born again. You accepted Jesus into your life. And you have a new home, which is in heaven. And you have a father. And you have a big brother, Jesus, who loves you. So I love y'all. And y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Father, we pray this and we thank you. And give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. And uh, I might see y'all in another two weeks. So we'll see. All right. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name.